Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tom Ogami and today we are here on the second channel again for another FNAF World statute tutorial. So today we are doing DD um, from FNAF World and we're going to be doing the version with the fishing rod. So a while back Lazar did do a uh, kind of tutorial on this, more of a time lapse. Um, and this is the same design, so credit to Lazar where credit is due. Um, but I've just gone ahead and added a fishing rod because in the game, um, DD has a fishing rod, so I thought it's only right to add one. Now the fishing rod we will be adding is a Minecraft one, so it's not strictly um, the same. But if you want to make adaptions to it, then you are more than welcome to do so. Um, but without further ado, let's get straight on into the tutorial. So the blocks you'll need are the following, you'll need brown stained clay, black wool, purple stained clay, yellow stained clay, pink wool, white stained clay, white wool, light grey wool, lime stained clay, green stained clay, grey wool, block of quartz, oak wood, spruce wood and oak planks. Now a map is always handy if you want to grab one of them, if you're on PC don't worry about that. Um, and yeah all I can say is if you want to pause and grab them blocks into your inventory that'll be great and then we can get straight on into the tutorial. Okie dokie, so what we're going to start off by doing is the front of the legs. Now the front of the legs are 12 tall, 8 wide. So the first layer is going to be 8 wide, it's going to be 8 brown stained clay. So there you go, as you can see that's 8 brown stained clay and now essentially all we got to do is build 11 layers on top of it. So the second layer is 8 brown stained clay again. The third layer is black wool, so 8 black wool. The fourth layer is purple stained clay. Now you can use magenta um, because I'm aware on certain um, devices, I believe on mobile it might be, the purple um, stained clay is a lot darker so you can use a magenta stained clay. On here it's not too like different so it doesn't really matter. Um, but again, I'm playing on Xbox so it might be slightly different on other platforms. So the next two layers is again purple stained clay. So that makes the 4th, 5th and 6th layer purple stained clay. Again, right now should be 6 layers tall, 8 layers wide, or 8 blocks wide, should I say. Um, the next layer, the 7th layer, is black wool. The 8th and 9th layer is purple stained clay. Now the next layer, the 10th layer, is slightly different to the other ones. It goes 2, purple stained clay, 4, black wool. If I can place it, that is. I'm breaking everything but what I want to break. And then two purple stained clay. So just to go over that again, it's two purple stained clay, four black wool, two purple stained clay. So the next layer, the 11th layer is two black wool, four purple, two blacks. So as you can kind of see, it kind of makes like a uh, dipped like part here. And that's where the pelvis is on the animatronic. Um exoskeleton that's kind of like the uh, pelvis region the 12th and final layer is one black wool six purple stained clay and one black wool and once you've done that it should look something like this and that is 12 tall and eight wide now i'm going to prove an easy way to uh make sure you've done everything correctly alternatively you could go ahead and go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve but that's long and who likes counting maybe one of you out there is like a maths um, fanatic and you love counting. But if that's the case, just count. But I'm lazy and I don't want to count. So if you go on map, you can see here it says Y5. If you're on PC, press F3 and just look for the Y coordinate. If you go up here, it should be 12 layers off the floor. So in this case, Y17. If your floor level is, say, Y10, then count 12 up from Y10, not 12 up from Y5. So yeah, again, if it's uh, not Y5, then go from that number, if it's say Y8, then it should be 20, Y10, 22, you get the idea, hopefully. So adjust it to whatever coordinate your floor level is, but it should be 12 blocks off the floor. So with that said and done, that is the legs complete, again, uh, 12 by 8, and we're now going to move on to the body. So the body is very, very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by marking out. So on the left side, on this black wall, we're going to place one pink wall, and on the right side, we're going to do the exact same, place one pink wall. Then we're going to get our white stained clay and we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 to left using our white stained clay. And on the right side we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 to right using again white stained clay. 
Now the reason why we're doing this is that's just to mark out where the hands start and we'll come back later on in the video and um, build them. But for now we're going to continue with the body. So for the body, what we're going to do is on this pink wall here we're going to build up 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Next to that, and we're going to go up row by row. We're going to build up 12 yellow stained clay. So that's 12 yellow stained clay. 12 pink wool. 12 yellow stained clay. And then we're going to mirror this. So the next row is 12 yellow stained clay. The row after that is 12 pink wool. 12 yellow stained clay. And then on top of this one, we're going to go up 11 pink wool. And bring it up to the same height, which gives you something that looks like this. And again, that's a 12 by 8. Easy way to prove it should be 24 blocks off the floor. So in this case, it's Y29. Okay, so very, very simple. Again, just rows. It goes pink, yellow, pink, yellow, yellow, pink, yellow, pink. 12 by 8, 12 tall, 8 wide. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, there is a button that we're going to add. And we're going to do that now. So for the button, you'll need white wool and light gray wool. And we're going to come to the top left corner right here, which should be the pink wall. We're going to go one, two over to the right to so this row of pink, and then down one. And then we're going to place one white wall. We're then going to go down diagonal to the right three times. So one, two, three. And it should give you something that looks like this. Then what we're going to do is kind of make it into two squares. So the way we go about doing this is placing two white wall right there, and then two white wall right there. And that gives you two two by two squares of a white wall. Now, in the two surrounding gaps, so this one here and this one here, we're going to place a light grey 2x2 um, two two square on each one, and that will give you in total a 4x4 four four square, which is our ginormous button. And that is very, very simple, and it should look like this. Again, bear in mind it is a 3D effect. You don't want to be building it into the statue. You want to be building it on top. And, uh, yeah, that is pretty much it for the front of the body. So we're now going to move on to the arms. So for the arms, we're going to start on the left one now. We got the first row here, which is four wide, and it's white stained clay. On top of this, we're going to place two rows of white stained clay, and that gives you a four by three. Four wide, three tall. Now, the arms are 12 by four, um, so the first three layers done. Another nine to go. So the fourth layer is black wool. The fifth, sixth, and seventh layer is white stained clay. The next one is black wool. And then the remaining four layers, what we're going to do is going to build up four pink, four yellow, four pink, four yellow. And once you've done that, that gives you a 12 by 4, and that is the left arm complete. So again, just go over it one last time. The first three layers is white stained clay, a layer of black wool, three layers of white stained clay, a layer of black wool, and four layers of pink, yellow, pink, yellow. Now again, if you do it correctly, this yellow should match up with the pink here. It shouldn't be pink pink it should be yellow pink now the other arm is the exact same just mirrored so if you want to go ahead and do that yourself you are more than welcome um however if you want to go over it with me um then i'm going to go over it and you can take your time do what you want to do um and have a nice day i guess because you won't be messing up and having to come back but anyways again if you want to skip ahead feel free to do so and we're now going to work on the right arm so the first three layers again is white stained clay, each layer being three, uh, four wide, sorry, apologies. The fourth layer is four black wool. The fifth, sixth, seventh layer is um, white stained clay. Then we've got a layer of black wool. And then we've got our four layers of yellow, pink, yellow, pink. Again, should look like this. It's an exact carbon copy of the left arm just mirrored. So on this side, it goes pink, yellow, pink, yellow. On this side, it goes yellow, pink, yellow, pink. So hopefully, again, that's pretty self-explanatory. And once you've done that, that is the front of the statue complete, and it should be looking something like this. Now, I'm going to get rid of my arm, and we're going to have a quick pause session if you need to catch up. So again, that's what it looks like in its entirety so far. It's 24 tall, 16 wide, 8 wide if you're not including the arms. I don't know why you would not include the arms, but hey-ho. Uh, so this is the front of the legs, 12 by 8. We've got the front of the body, 12 by 8, and the front of each arm, which is 12 by 4. So we are making really nice progress. However, as you may have noticed, it's awfully 2D, and uh, we're building a statue, so we want it to be a tad more 3D. So what we're going to do now is work on the sides, and to do that, we're going to go to the bottom left corner of the legs right here, 
and we're going to expand it backwards one two three using brown stained clay and that will give you a backwards l shape it should look something like this so essentially the side of legs is 12 by 4 we're only placing three blocks on each row however because we've already got this column here complete and that counts as the fourth row so again we're only placing three blocks per row so the second layer is two um second layer is brown stained clay I was about to say two brown stained clay, but I just realized it's three. The third layer is black wool. The fourth, fifth, and sixth layer is purple stained clay. Now, if you noticed a pattern, um, you'll notice that whatever block is at the side kind of matches up with the blocks we're placing. So the next row is black wool. The next two rows is purple stained clay. And this is the one exception of where things don't match up. The next row is one purple, two black wool. And if you don't correctly, it should go purple, two black wool, purple. The next row is black wool, two purple. And the final row is, again, black wool and two purple. And it should look something like this. That is a 12 by 4. And the right side is the exact same if you want to skip ahead again and do it yourself. I'm going to go around to the right side now and, again, talk you guys through it, the ones who uh, want talking through. So we're going to go one, two, three to the right using our brown stained clay. The second layer, again, is brown, black, purple times three, black, purple times two. Then we go from left to right, we go two black, one purple. So again, that's the one exception is this row here. And then the final two layers is two purple, one black. Again, should look something like this. That is the right side complete. And that now means we can move on to the arms. So for the arms, what we're going to do is we're going to get our white stained clay and we're going to come around to the rear of the statue right here and come to the bottom of the white stained clay, which is, of course, the arms. We're then going to expand it one, two, three, all the way back um, on each one. And if you come below, you'll notice that's a four by four square of white stained clay. And if you come to the side, you'll notice it's like an L shape. Coming over to the right side now, we're going to do the exact same. So one, two, three, all the way back, all the way across. And again, that gives you a backwards L shape and also a 4x4 four four square underneath of white stained clay. Um, and we're going to stay on the left side and we're going to work this side now. And then we'll go over to the right side later on in the video. Okie dokie. So the side of the arm, again, is 12x4. However, we've got the row here already complete. So we're only placing three blocks in each row. Same as the legs is pretty self-explanatory. So the first three layers, including the one we've already placed, is white stained clay. We're then going to place a row of black wool, three layers of white stained clay, a row of black wool. And then what we're going to do from left to right is four, yellow, uh, four pink, four yellow, four yellow. And then, of course, we'll have the row of four pink on the very end. It should look like this. So again, the stripe through the middle is the yellow one. Um, and then the one surrounding it, either side should be pink wool. And that's kind of what it looks like from an angle. So we're now going to go around to the right side and imitate this again. So the first three layers is white stained clay. We have a row of black wool. Three layers of white stained clay. A layer of black wool. And then we go four yellow, four yellow, four pink. That is the right side of our arm complete, 12 by 4. And we can now move on to the rear side of the statue because if you come around to the rear, you can see here there is a huge gap where we've built nothing and that's what we're going to work on filling in right about now so starting off at the bottom of the rear of the statue so the back of the legs it's 12 by 8 again 12 tall 8 wide however row on this side row on that side means we're only placing six blocks in each row to make it a 12 by 8 so again it's pretty much just a game of matching up the first two rows is six brown stained clay the third row is black wool. Fourth, fifth, and sixth row is purple stained clay. Seventh row is black wool. Eighth and ninth is purple. And then again, we have the slight exception, which is the tenth row, which is six, um, sorry, two purple. So one purple we're placing. Four black wool, one purple. And then this row is one black wool, four purple one black wall, and then the final row is six purple. And it all joins up lovely, lovely, jubbly. 
and uh, comes together to look like this. So again, you can see it's like a carbon copy of the front, um, just on the rear of the statue. And again, that kind of represents like the pelvis or the animatronic um, endoskeleton mark lines thingy bo bobs. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's a 12 by 8 as you can see here. Apologies if my voice is like going a bit funny. Uh, I don't know what's up with it. It just seems to be like dying inside. Um, so I don't know how much, mo uh, how much longer my voice will last if I can pronounce my words that is. Um, so hopefully we can power through this nevertheless. So anyways, let's start on the back of the arms. Now I'm going to skip the back of the body purely because it's very, very simple. So again, the back of the arms, 12 by 4 However, we've got the row here, as always, so we're only placing three blocks. So the first three rows is white stained clay, same as always. Black wool. Three rows of white stained clay. Black wool. And then for the top here, we've got the row of pink. Four yellow. Four pink. Four yellow. Perfect. That's the back of the right arm complete. Moving over to the back of the left arm, we've got three rows of white stained clay row of black wool, three rows of white stained clay, row of black wool, and then we go from left to right, we go yellow, four yellow, four pink, four yellow. And that is the back of the arms, if I can place that one block, complete, and as you can see here, they are both 12 by 4. So, the back of the body, what is so simple about it? I'm going to explain now. It's simply just rows. So we're just going to go 12 pink. It's the same as the front, essentially. 12 yellow. 12 pink. 12 yellow. Any guesses on the next color? Looking at the front, it is, of course, 12 yellow, because now we're mirroring it. 12 pink. 12 yellow. And the last, but not least, row is 12 pink. And it gives you something that looks like this. Again, that is the rear of the statue complete. And it should, theoretically, if you do it correctly, go pink, yellow, pink, yellow, pink, yellow, pink, yellow. Swipe, uh, twist in the works here. Yellow, pink, yellow, pink, yellow, pink, yellow, pink. Beautiful. So, it should look like that again. And be 24 tall, 16 wide, 8 wide, if you're not including the arms. Before we move on, what we're going to go ahead and do is fill in the shoulders. The shoulders are pretty self-explanatory. What we're going to do is on either corner, we're going to place a 2x2 two two of yellow stained clay. Like so. And then the rest doesn't really matter, to be honest. So you can go ahead and fill it all in, in fact, with just yellow stained clay. Because you're not going to be able to see it. Um, it's all going to be covered up by the head anyways. So you can just build something that looks like this. Again, shoulders are 16 by 4, 4 wide, 16, or technically 16 wide, 4 thick, um, and should look like that. So, before we move on to the head, what we're going to go ahead and do is add the fishing rod. So that's kind of like an unexpected um, thing. Normally do this near the end of the tutorial, but I think personally it probably makes sense to do it now, um, seeing as we're working on the body, and rather than later when we're not working on the body. Um, so, the materials you'll need for the fishing rod, if you want to build the conventional Minecraft one, um, which I think is probably the best one um, in terms of how easy it is to do, then you're going to need oak wood, spruce wood, oak planks, grey wool, and of course white wool. You come to the front side of the statue, to the left arm right here, and right on this row of black wool here, we're going to come to the third block from left, so it's this one, and we're going to place a oak wood log in front of it like so and that's kind of like the mark point of the fishing rod we're then underneath that going to place one gray wall and then we're going to go diagonal forwards like so forwards one up diagonal up one and it should give you a shape that looks like a u in this u you're going to place a two by two of white wall and that's kind of like the uh, cog or reel of the uh, fishing rod and then what you're going to do is on top of the white wall, you're going to place one oak log and to the left of it, one spruce log. And that's kind of like the stem of the rod. So what we're going to do now is go up diagonal seven times using our oak logs here. So that's twice, three, four, um, five, six, and seven. If you do it correctly, it should come up 
roughly to the same height as the uh, body. As you can see here, this should be Y29, um, and this one here, again, same height. So it should be the same height as the top of the body. Now what we're going to do is underneath each oak log, we're going to place one spruce log, like so. And then we're going to actually further that and go up diagonal one last time until it comes up to the same height, up one to right one, and then we're going to work our way back down the uh, rod, like so, placing one spruce log on top of each oak log. And that gives you something that looks like this. Now we're going to further that again once more. So on top of the spruce logs, we're going to place one grey wall, working our way diagonally down until we meet up with the bottom right there. And that is the, I guess, second to last part of the rod. All we're missing is the actual wire. So what we're going to do is go to the top left corner of the rod here, right to this part where there's the spruce logs, and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five blocks downwards. We're then going to go down diagonal to the right, down one, and then down diagonal to the right again. And it will link up and look something like this. And that is your fishing rod. Um, technically complete. What we're actually going to go ahead and do is go around to the rear of the statue now. And add a tiny little detail. Um, which kind of completes it a tad more. But yeah anyways that's what the fishing rod should look like. It's kind of a mini little pixel art. Um, and if you want to pause here you are more than welcome to do so. Again in total there is nine oak um, logs. And then we kind of like line it with the spruce logs and the grey wall. So as I was saying, for the rear of the rod, what we're going to do is come around to the rear side of the left arm. To the bottom left corner of the left arm, and we're going to go across one. We're going to place one spruce log. Make sure it's facing upright. We're then going to go down one and then in one towards the like center of the bottom of the hand and you'll end up placing three spruce logs which look like that and it kind of caps it off makes it look like that dd is gripping onto the fishing rod rather than it just being like inside their hand and weird and just like sticking out of nowhere um so yeah that's what the fishing rod should look like once you added it you can choose to add it if you want if you don't want it then feel free to not have it uh, but i think it looks kind of nice so that's why i added it uh, but yeah, anyways, with that said, that's the fishing rod complete, and we can now move back on to making progress on the actual statue. So, for the head now, which is what we're moving on to, we're going to go to the front side, to the left corner, and we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. On the fifth block, which should be this pink wall right here, we're going to place a white stained clay, bring it to forwards. We're going to head over to the right side now, and we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, on top of this pink wall here, we're going to place a white stained clay, Bring it two forwards and link them together, which should be a six block gap. One, two, three, four, five, six, as you can see right there. So now what we're going to do is go around to the side of the statue, expand it backwards five blocks on either side, and that will give it a two block overhang on the rear side of the statue. And again, we're going to go ahead and join them together by placing six blocks in either one. And that will give you an eight by eight square, which is, of course, the base plate slash template of the head. So, for the front side of the face, what we're going to do, the first layer is simply 8 white stained clay. The next layer is 1 white stained clay. Then we've got 1 quartz. We've got a 1 block gap, which we'll actually come back to later on. 2 quartz, 1 block gap, 1 quartz, 1 white stained clay. And in the 2 block gaps, uh, or the 2 block gaps, should I say, we're going to actually indent 1 black wall, so set it 1 block backwards into the head, like so. Um, and that's just to give it a bit more of a 3D effect and make it look a tad more interesting. Um, but yeah, it's just a simple thing that makes it look a tiny bit nicer, I guess. So the next row, the third row, is one pink wall. Six white stained clay, one pink wall. The fourth row is one pink wall, uh, one white stained clay. Sorry, I get so confused with the uh, white stained clay and the pink. They're like... This is technically pink in my eyes, kind of like a creamy, peachy colour. Um, we're going to need our green stained clay and our lime stained clay for this. We do one quartz, one green, two white, one green, one quartz, one white. The next row is the exact same, but instead of green we use lime. So one white, one quartz, one lime, two white, one lime, one quartz, one white. The next row is three white, two yellow, 
three white. And then this is kind of like the final two layers of like the hat layer. So we have one pink, yellow, pink, yellow, yellow, pink, yellow, pink. And then again for the final layer, which is the exact same. So pink, yellow, pink, yellow, yellow, pink, yellow, pink. So right now that's an eight by eight square and you'll notice it's missing something and that is a nose. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is right above the two quartz blocks right here, we're gonna place a two by two of pink wool and that gives Dee Dee their nose and makes it look a tad more complete. So as I was saying, that's an eight by eight square. If you wanna pause here, you are more than welcome to do so. And we're gonna go, go around to the left side of the head and start working on that. Okie dokie. So the first two layers, again, it's simply white stained clay. And it should be looking all right like this at the moment. So again, like a backwards L. The next layer, we're gonna need our oak planks. So it goes three oak planks, four white stained clay. The next layer, the fourth layer is six oak planks, one white stained clay. The next row is seven oak planks and that will link up perfectly to the edge. The next row is three oak planks, two yellow, two oak. And then the final two layers again is like the alternating pink yellow for the hat. So it's two rows of pink yellow, pink, yellow, yellow, pink, yellow, and it will link up with the pink on the end. And that is the left side of the head complete. Now the right side again is mirrored. So if you wanna copy it, you are more than welcome to do so, but I'm gonna go for it nevertheless. So again, the first two layers is simply white stained clay. This time I'm gonna be working from right to left. So it's three oak, four white stained clay. The next row is six oak, one white stained clay. Next row is seven oak. Next row is three oak, two yellow, two oak. And then we've got our pink, yellow, pink, yellow, yellow, pink, yellow, pink. Again, eight by eight square. And it's the exact same as the other side. So now we've got both sides complete. We can come around to the rear side of the head. It should be looking something like this. That looks a tad weird with the black wall being there. Um, but it doesn't matter because it could be covered up in a second. Um, so again, it's eight by eight. However, we've got the row either side done. So we're only placing six blocks on each row. So the first layer is white stained clay. The second layer is six oak planks. And we're gonna do the exact same for the next three layers. So that's one, two, three. And for the final layer of the oak planks, we're gonna place two oak planks, two yellow, and two oak. So essentially, it's just oak up to the same height, but we got the two yellow in the middle. Again, for the final two layers, it goes pink, yellow, pink, yellow, yellow, pink, yellow, pink. And that is the rear side of the head. For the top side of the head, as you can see here, it should be looking something like this. What we're gonna go ahead and do is link all the yellow up. So right in each corner, we're gonna place one yellow stained clay and that will give you something that looks like this. And then what we're gonna do is in the middle, we're gonna make a massive plus sign by simply linking all the yellow up to the center. So it looks something like this. And then all the remaining gaps, we're simply just gonna place pink wool and that will fill everything in and make it look a bit more like um, controlled and a bit more intentional. So for the propeller, which is I guess the final addition, what we're gonna do is in the two by two in the center, we're gonna place a two by two cube of oak planks. And then coming off of that, what we're gonna do is expand it one, two, three, four blocks using pink wool off at each direction. So we come around to the left side, we go one, two, three, four on both. So it's two thick on each side, one, two, three, four on the rear side, two thick. And then on the right side, one, two, three, four, again, too thick. And that will be like elevated one block off the ground because we got the gap here. On top of the oak planks in the middle, we're gonna place a two by two cube of yellow stained clay. And that kind of tops it off and makes it look a bit more complete. And is like the top like point of the propeller that stops the blades falling off. Um, with that said and done, that is the statue complete. And I'll get rid of my inventory here I'll clear it out and then we'll have a quick spin around whilst we end off the video so again hopefully you did enjoy and you found this tutorial useful 
Um, I'm just going to be doing a little spin around whilst, I guess, waffling. Um, so, again, this was designed by Lazar, so credit to him. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. Um, the fishing rod was by myself, so hopefully you like a that addition. Um, I think it kind of just added something that is a bit more unique than just having a, genu uh, a general statue, like a plain generic statue. Um, again, I know DD's rod is slightly different. I believe it's orange, so if you want to adjust it to be like that, then feel free to do so. Um, and again, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, definitely consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel down below. Also, check out my main channel where I do a bunch more FNAF content, um, like statues and stuff, as well as a bunch of other stuff like Star Wars and coming in now in the future, some Marvel stuff. So hopefully that will be cool. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. And if you do, definitely consider checking it out, subscribing, and uh, also leaving a nice comment um, with some future suggestions. So with that said and done, again, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, my name has been Tom Ogomi. And uh, I'm going to give my voice a rest before it dies forever. So anyways, again, thank you very much. Until next time, I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use. Because you can't stop it from shining through. It's true. Baby, let the light shine through If you believe it's true Baby, won't you let the light shine through